Hi guys, John here, Common Sense Outdoors. So I came out to the woods today, walked through the woods looking for shed antlers. The deer around here should be dropping their antlers. Uh, didn't find any. I did find two arrows. One wooden shaft arrow that's broken off. And one aluminum arrow. I would love to know what this guy hit with this broadhead. I don't know if you can see that. The only thing I could think, and I looked around to see if there was a rock or anything hard that it might have hit. The only thing I could think is maybe it hit a leg bone on an animal. Something hard. I've never seen a broadhead curl like that. <clears throat> Anyways, as you can tell by the title, we're going to make a rake today. And some of you might be asking, why would I need to make a rake? Well, there's a lot of chores whether you're bushcrafting or or even for survival that a rake could come in very handy whether that's from keeping your area around your fire clear of debris so that you don't start a fire outside your fire pit to gathering debris and leaves for sleeping on or even a debris shelter anybody that's ever made a debris shelter or has it in their mind that they could make one if they had to I guarantee you if you took the time to throw together a rake you're going to collect that debris much easier expending much less calories and probably at least twice as fast than trying to scrape them with your hands or, or even grabbing a branch to try to do it with so uh, I've actually already made one of these before when we were camping this last summer I made one when we were tenting it um, and I've already got the pieces pretty much made to save you the uh, the boring part first thing you need is a hand, however long you want your handle to be somebody's dogs over that way are just going crazy today I apologize for that uh, so however long you want your handle this is about a five foot stick fir branch and then another one about three feet then what you're going to need is either two sticks or one stick that you can split in half to make two and depending on how wide you want your rake uh, six to seven rake tines just real quick about the debris shelter I mentioned <clears throat> you won't see that on my channel I, you won't see me making a debris shelter here in the Pacific Northwest for a couple of reasons and that is it's very wet here uh, so the window of opportunity to use leaves as a shelter is not a very large window it'd have to be the perfect time of year to have dry leaves enough dry leaves on the ground uh, otherwise normally they're going to be damp or wet in fact it's starting to rain right now so the other reason is uh, here in the Pacific Northwest especially the, the more north you go uh, oak trees and madrone trees only grow up to certain elevations so around my area once you get over 2,000 feet in elevation you're only dealing with mostly evergreens you're not going to find a bunch of oak trees and madrone trees above 2,000 feet so if you spend a lot of your time above 2,000 feet like I do a debris shelter really isn't an, an option for me but if you're camping backpacking whatever and you want something to do you want to make a rake they come in pretty handy if I'm camping out of my truck a lot of times I'll have a rake in the truck and a shovel so anyway with all that babbling being said <clears throat> let me turn you down here and I'll uh, put this thing together on the ground just real quick anybody that oh, careful anybody that doesn't know or hasn't been following all my videos the table 
and the chair were in previous videos on my channel. And now it's going to start pouring. My camera's going to get wet. So like I said, I'm going to use seven brake tines. I have notched already six of them. I saved the last one to show just in case anybody doesn't know how to notch the stick easy. What I did, these are about, I don't know if I said, these are about nine inches, eight inches. And I know I want at least a palm's width sticking out the bottom of my rake. So to get my first one, I marked, I held my palm and I took my saw and marked for a notch. Now I've already, once you get your first one, then you just take the rest of them and line them up and that'll, that'll make all your tines the same length. So then you take your rail, or your two sticks, which are pretty much flat, and you decide how wide you want your notch and mark that. So now I have two marks and I know I want that notched out. If I have a folding saw, it's really easy. Just saw down into it a little bit. Maybe a third of the way. Don't want to go any more than that. Don't want to go past half for sure. Then just put your knife in there pop that notch out. You can clean it up, clean it up a little bit, make sure you've got a flat surface and your notch is ready. So then what we want to do is put my knees on my gloves here. <clears throat> we want to sandwich all these tines between our rail. And our rail is going to hook to our two sticks that will make our frame. We want a rail, and I've already notched these two for the rail to sit into our handle sticks. But we want our rail to stick out a little bit on each side of the, these sticks here. So if I want it to stick out a little bit, I can go like that and I can say, okay, I need about two fingers in. And we're going to put together our rail first with our tines. <clears throat> Let me figure out what I did with my piece of cordage. Here we go. So we take our first tine. Put it between the two sticks. So my notch is a little big, but that's all right. I've got a loop, overhand loop, in my cordage. I'm gonna put it back through itself, creating a slip loop to start off. Okay, and remember, we want about two fingers to start off. And we're going to pull that nice and tight and just wrap. A couple times each way. Now, I could do this and save a little bit of cordage uh, if I use pieces of cord. I'm going to go ahead and try to do it all with one piece. So from there what we're going to do, I'm just going to hold that cordage there. We're going to slide in the rest of our brake tines. So we can get an idea of where they're going to go. Now we want the same thing on this end, a couple of fingers in. So if we figure that one's going to go about there, then we can just evenly space 
the rest of them in here. About like that. Now if I do this correctly, I can hold on to all this. Grab my cordage. That's kind of important. I want my last wrap on this tine to go around the back side and my next wrap on the next tine to come around the front side. So the cordage is pulling this tine this way and this tine this way. A couple of wraps. And the other way. And my last wrap, backside, pulling tight. To my next time. The cordage is a little messed up here. Hope I'm staying in view for you. My cordage is going to be too short. We're going to have to tie that off. Add another piece. I got my last time here a little bit closer than I wanted to. It's alright. Couple half hitches in that. Can get it underneath that cordage. It's a 120 pound bank line that I'm using.
Okay, there's our spike rail. Now all we need to do is we're going to take our first long piece. And get an angle that's going to work for you guys better. Okay, I've got that notched. So that's going to sit in there nice and flat. Just a simple overhand loop on the end with a nice tag. times then I can go around behind this first time will help hold it in there too let's go ahead and use up the rest of my piece of cordage here come back to my tag square knot Okay, now we take our other shorter piece that's also notched, we set it on that. Need another piece of cordage. Take my tail in, bring it back on itself, pinch that together, roll it around my finger. Put the loop through the hole, overhand loop. Run my tail in through that loop, creates a slip loop, starts us off. You know, make sure not to bury your tag in on your loop when you use this method of lashing. Back to my tag. Square knot. Oh, here comes the rain again. Hopefully it's just a sprinkle. Okay, now all we have to do is make sure I can get where you guys can see me here. Let's take our two pieces here. This piece actually has a unique curve to it, which helps, but it doesn't have to. All we have to do is lash those together right there. Same method. If I want to, I can come through, go through the middle, around my wraps, and wrap it, get to my two tags, square knot. And the rain is coming. So, just like that guys, got a five foot handle to a frame, to a spike rail, and I can rake leaves with very little effort.
can get this to where you can see what I'm doing. Not very well. Not very well you can't see that is. Rake works awesome. Actually don't want to rake all this area up and make it more obvious. I'm trying to keep low profile here. Alright guys. Like I said, it doesn't take very long to throw something like this together. My rail's not the straightest on there. But that works. So next time you're out backpacking, camping, you want a little fun project, you can always make yourself a rake. Hope you like the tip guys. Thanks for watching. Much appreciated for your subscriptions, your views, <coughs> excuse me, your comments and your likes. We'll see you. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> we'll see you in the next video.